Hello again brewers. So one of my previous videos was uh, the brew day for the tin pan bitter. I'm going to be packaging that up in this pressure barrel here. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a um, little tutorial video on how to set up a PB and hopefully maintain some good pressure in it and not have any leaks and get a nicely served pint out of it. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. First things first, as with everything else, cleaning and good sanitation is probably the first place you want to start. Um, so this PB did have a brew in it um, previously, so it's not a brand new one. Um, you just need to clean it out really thoroughly, make sure you take out any solid deposits of yeast and um, trub off the bottom of the barrel. You'll probably find that they do get stained a little bit over time, um, but as long as you get all of the sort of dirt and crud out of the bottom and then follow your usual sanitising regime, it should be okay. In my case, I've used uh, star sand on it, so that has um, had a swish round with some star sand and it's now hopefully reasonably sterile. The other thing you want to do is look at your... Um, caps and seals and inspect all of those. So this type has got the S30 valve on it, which is the one that you can connect up the Hambleton barred gas cylinders to if you want to top up the gas or if you want to force carbonate the kegs. On the top half you've got a rubber seal here. That is to relieve pressure coming out. Obviously if this rubber bit here becomes loose or is worn out then it's going to freely let gas escape and it won't hold pressure. On the underside you've got another little rubber bit of tubing there which is a seal for the gas coming in. So essentially it's a kind of two-way basic two-way valve system there. So this one will allow gas in from the cylinder when it's put under pressure and in theory the top one will allow gas out when the pressure becomes too great at the top um, if it's uh, over primed or something. In practice I've found that generally the tap starts leaking or something like that before this begins to release pressure but um, that's a different matter. You will have a rubber seal on the inside of the cap which is not in there at the moment. So here is the rubber seal. You want to check all the um, rubber washers and stuff to make sure that they're not uh, too deformed or damaged. This one is a little bit marked from the previous use but I find with these ones from the top cap as long as the shape is reasonably um, intact if you flip them over when you put them back in you can normally get another use or two out of those before you need to replace them so I'm going to reuse that one but just turn it over and put it in like that. You'll also have a rubber seal for the tap. Um, this needs a really good clean out because obviously there's lots of nooks and crannies in there where dirt and yeast can accumulate. The rubber washer off of those, this one has actually deformed quite a lot and is not really usable anymore. If I put that on there you can see how loose a fit that is now. So that's not really going to be particularly easy to get a good seal on so I've got a replacement for that. Um, the tap does tend to be the place where I've had problems in the past with leaks and stuff so this one I would generally replace if there's any issues there so you can see that's a much more snug fit on there. The lip on these taps is not very wide so you have to be very careful with the amount of pressure that you apply to this washer in order for it not to basically get squeezed out of place and um, deform off of the little lip there that's supposed to hold it on. Uh, I'm not sure why they don't just make this plastic lip here a little bit wider because it would help a lot with um, preventing that seal from um, basically being rendered useless by people over tightening the, the tap at the front. Okay before you start assembling the pressure barrel it's important to lubricate the seals and the rubber washers um, and the threads on the top cap. So you can see there's a generous serving of Vaseline in there around the washer and also around the threads. 
Um, make sure that that rubber washer is seated nicely inside that little groove there, otherwise it will um, probably um, foul up and the seal won't work properly. And also um, some Vaseline on the threads of the tap connection point there. Um, and a little bit around the front just to seal against the washer. So two reasons for that, um, to help the seal on the threads and also just to keep the washers themselves lubricated so they're less likely to um, be deformed by the pressure when they're screwing in. Okay, so just assembling the tap now and when you're screwing this into place, just do not over tighten it. As soon as you see that washer starting to bite in there, um, you really don't want to turn it too much further than that. So uh, it's quite a bit of Vaseline around that, but the washer is already starting to get squeezed out a little bit, even though I've just done that um, finger tight and you could easily over tighten that thinking that it needs to be screwed in tighter and just pop the washer straight out of place. So um, yeah, literally as soon as you start to feel a little bit of resistance, then stop with that. So I'm just getting ready to siphon the brew out of that FV there into the barrel. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna put the sugar in. So that is 60 grams of bog standard granulated sugar that's going to go into the PB and then we're going to siphon on top of that. So I think over priming the barrel is another one of the reasons why people tend to have problems with pressure barrels, uh, especially when you're following instructions for kits and so on. They will tend to um, suggest sort of 80 to 100 grams in some cases for priming which certainly for pressure barrels is quite high and can easily um, result in the um, beer basically being forced out through the tap. Um, I've had that problem in the past and lost quite a lot of uh, brew for it just slowly dripping out uh, because it was under too much pressure so uh, better to under prime or prime a little bit lower and you can top up with a gas cylinder or you can add sugar um, as you go along if it runs out of gas so um, that's one good thing about pressure barrels it's not a problem sort of opening them up and chucking a little bit more sugar in um, which obviously doesn't work when you're bottling and so on so again just make sure that you've um, sanitized and washed your siphoning equipment properly uh, I'd just basically soak it in the bucket of star sand up until the point when I'm ready to use it so that should make sure it's pretty um, clean and ready to go. Right, so there's the siphon up and running. Um, just make sure that it's not splashing into the barrel too much. So the hose is right down on the base of the barrel in there and it's not gonna um, create too much splashing and oxygenate the, the beer as it goes in. Um, I've got one of these handy clips here on the edge of the bucket which just holds the siphon in place for me so once it's off and running I can pretty much leave it to it until um, the last little bit where I'll tip the bucket forward slightly to to try and get the last dregs out uh, but yeah that should be done in a few minutes and then we just need to seal it up so that's all into the barrel now um, I've just given the cap and the neck of the pressure barrel one last spray with the star sand um, and I can now put that on so again don't over tighten the cap um, if you force that rubber seal out of place it's not going to hold pressure so I'm literally just going finger tight so about there should be plenty okay you shouldn't be forcing it at all um, and with this cap you can actually kind of see if the washer is seated correctly because it's a little bit translucent which is helpful but if that starts to deform out of place obviously it's not going to hold the gas pressure in there so yep yeah, that is all done now um, some people do purge the cylinder sorry purge the pressure barrel 
<clears throat> with a gas cylinder. So there's one of the Hambleton Bard CO2 cylinders. I don't bother with that. I just keep that for if I need to top up the gas. Um, I think some people believe that it will um, stop any uh, potential kind of bacteria or whatever getting going if there's a layer of CO2 in. But I think that the sugar gets eaten up so quickly that it will form its own layer of CO2 pretty fast and you don't really need to worry about that too much. Uh, so that's just going to go back into the brew fridge, um, set at about 20 and a half degrees at the moment, so a week or two in there to carve up and then we should be serving some nice draft beer off of that pressure, bar pressure barrel. Okay, so this has been in the barrel for about a week now, so it's quite early on to be trying to take a pint off, but um, obviously, as you can see, it's definitely carved up. Slow and steady wins the race when you're trying to get a pint out of a pressure barrel. If you um, turn that tap full bore, it's just going to give you a pint of froth, but that's looking pretty good there, so that's, uh, yeah definitely coming along nicely. After a minute or two just to um, settle out you can see you've got a nice clear pint there so that's um, yeah really pleased with the clarity of that after such a short time in the barrel it's not really had a chance to fully condition yet but it's looking really nice and clear and just have a quick taster Yeah, not too bad at all. That's um, that's come out really nice actually. So um, yeah, as you can see, pressure barrel, you get that kind of slightly more frothy, um, creamy top on the beer, a bit more like a hand pulled pint at the pub. So one of the um, reasons I like to have a couple of PBs on the go um, with the more traditional English ales, because um, I think it just uh, yeah comes out served a little bit more um, true to style as it were okay great well thanks for watching guys i hope that helped a bit with um you using pressure barrels so i'll see you soon bye bye